please welcome the Commissioner for Energy, Commissioner Kadri Simpson. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased that as uh, you today at this uh, important annual event for the electricity sector, and um, especially I'm pleased that uh, this time it takes place in person. We are experiencing a paradigm shift in energy policy in light of Russia's ongoing war against Ukraine and um, in light of the global gas supply crunch. With a swift, strong and united EU response to the Repower EU plan, we are decisively moving away from Russian fossil fuels. It is clear that the way to ensure security of supply is to double down on the EU Green Deal, our growth agenda very much based on energy transition. In the wake of the crisis, the Commission immediately drew up um, emergency legislation to contain uh, volatile energy markets, diversify supplies, and we got through the winter without uh, major disruptions. We understand that the situation has been extremely challenging. It was price-wise challenging for our households and businesses, but um, actually we have avoided the worst. And uh, the, the results are in many ways striking. Gas storage facilities uh, were filled to 90% already by October last year, and even much more surprisingly, by the end of the heating season, the willing rate was still above 55% close to 30 percentage points higher than uh, the year before. And over 18 percent of uh, reduction in gas demand also clearly exceeded what was agreed between member states. But today we already need to discuss the future of EU's energy system after the crisis. The challenge remaining is to invest in the long-term stability, affordability and sustainability, and this is about reinforcing the right incentives. It implies a much stronger focus on renewables and the infrastructure and technologies that underpin them. The Repower EU plan has um, achieved higher binding targets for renewables and energy efficiency and announced new strategies to reach them. This means we will need to add a, about one and a half times more wind and solar capacity by 2030 compared to the 400 gigawatts we have today. And with this in mind, we are acting on several fronts in parallel. The EU solar energy strategy with a higher target of 320 gigawatts by 2025 and 600 gigawatts by 2030 uh, is accompanied by a new legally binding obligation to install solar PV panels on new buildings and a new large-scale skills partnership and solar PV alliance, which is a good opportunity to explore with stakeholders um, investment opportunities, diversification of supply chain, and uh, delivering efficient and sustainable PV products. And for offshore wind, in January, all member states concluded ambitious goals until 2030. Um, of course, for front runners are coming from North Sea region, so in April, leaders from this region, but also energy ministers and industry leaders met and at the Austin Declaration um, event. Um, we signed this declaration and it demonstrated a strong political leadership for uh, accelerating the deployment of offshore renewables and jointly developed the North Sea as a green power plant of Europe but similar developments are taking place also around other seed basins, uh, BEMIP and uh, latest uh, very strong announcement by MED9 energy ministers from Mediterranean region. The Commission also intends to publish a communication demonstrating progress made and next steps of the EU offshore renew renewable energy strategy that was adopted only in November 2022, but we already need to upgrade it. And finally, Green infrastructure is fundamental to make this a success story. Today, electricity makes up 20% of energy use in the EU, and it should be over 50 in future. 
and you have projected uh, 58 to 71 percent in the study published today. We hear the call from industry leaders uh, for common rules and guidelines for the development of grids. And this is important, not only to increase export opportunities for the wind farms, but also to strengthen regional social welfare, security of supply and reduce uh, environmental impact. But it clearly requires a good planning. It's a system that goes beyond national borders, covering both offshore and onshore reinforcements. Also developing uh, technological solutions and uh, financing and regional cooperation at all levels, uh, in both public and private sectors. And we stand uh, by the member states to facilitate the implementation of the agreed rules on permitting. And I'm bringing together with the stakeholders on different topics, um, also in such topics like um, investments and technologies and skills and public acceptance. And for that, we will create a um, high-level event in this September. From the member states' perspective, the alignment of new 2030 goals uh, and climate neutrality target also needs to be captured. So they are submitting to the Commission their latest updated national energy and climate plans. And the deadline is uh, 1st of July. And with these NCPs, we can take into account of course, each member's unique energy mix, while also it enab enables us to coordinate uh, actions at EU level in order to collectively reach our commitments, both um, 2030 and 2050. And in the context, I have laid out the Commission together with the Council and the European Parliament is also working on the last major initiatives during this mandate. Our proposal to reform electricity market design offers a stable framework for future investments without questioning existing arrangements for investments already made and the national choices on the preferred energy mix. We deeply believe in um, the need to strengthen investment signals and maintain investors' confidence over the long run. And it is equally important to preserve the price formation mechanism and the EU integrated market. Both help to preserve security of supply during the energy crisis. So let's not forget, we did not experience serious outages that some had predicted for last year. So the proposed reforms will help to better protect consumers and companies against any future price shocks. Plus, the market, the power system and the investment incentives will be in place for the massive rollout of the renewables needed to pursue the path to decarbonisation. Meanwhile, the Commission has also published a report on the implementation of the emergency measures in the electricity sector. We have concluded that regulated retail prices have proved useful as an immediate safety net during the crisis period. Energy efficiency measures are a non-regret option any time. Uh, while during the crisis, the importance was stemming from the possibility to mitigate peak consumption. And this is also the experience that we have captured with the electricity market design proposal. And on the revenue cap, you know well our clear position. It was considered necessary in the context of last year's very high prices. However, a mechanism capping revenue seriously risks to deter investments in the long run. And these investments in clean power production are necessary to achieve our decarbonisation objectives. So this is why we have not proposed to extend it beyond the crisis. As I have said in many occasions, uh, the energy system of the future also needs to be built physically. At the beginning of the year in Davos, uh, President von der Leyen underlined the importance of high quality and innovative EU products remaining globally competitive. And this is addressed in the Net Zero Industry Act proposed by the Commission this March. And it sets out a clear European framework to reduce our reliance on highly concentrated imports and dependencies that we do have. And it aims to overcome barriers to scaling up manufacturing of net zero technologies in the EU and to make sure we are well equipped for the green transition. 
the resilience of our future energy systems to a significant extent will be measured by secure access to the technologies that will power our decarbonized energy systems. Wind turbines, uh, electrolyzers, batteries, solar PV and heat pumps, for instance. And this is part of the Commission's European Green Deal Industrial Plan. The global market for key mass manufactured net zero technologies is set to triple by 2030 and worth around 600 billion euros annually. And this is a great business opportunity for those who move first. And it is great news for the green transition. Ladies and gentlemen, I have given you only the snapshot on the European energy system that has survived once in a generation crisis and can exit this crisis more resilient uh, and future-proof. It is not over and we will remain vigilant for the next months and years to come. But as this commission is ending its mandate, our task is to finalize the framework for 2030 targets, but also to look closer at the European pathway towards climate neutrality. We are working towards setting a 2040 climate target to be published early next year. So I hope also the discussions during this conference can take the lessons learned over the past year, but look into the future to keep a steady aim for secure, affordable and clean energy system. Thank you and I wish you fruitful discussions. Thank you.